Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. It's been a couple interesting years for our finances. We had the COVID market bust followed by a market surge only to again be followed by the 2022 market downturn where the S&P closed the year down almost 20%. But as we're in the midst of 2023, the markets are doing quite well. We can easily say it's been a roller coaster these past couple years, and we've dealt with the surge in inflation, hitting highs of over 9%, but fortunately those inflation rates seem to be getting under control and are presently under 3%. And in an attempt to combat this high inflation, the Fed went through a series of rate hikes, which brought interest rates from almost next to nothing to where today, you can easily find a place to park your cash and earn over 5%. After rates hovering around zero for so long, this finally created an opportunity for savers to earn a yield on their cash, whereby effectively the banks are now competing with Uncle Sam for deposit. And I'm actually really excited that for the first time in decades, we can get a decent return on our cash. I've actually made a number of videos on the subject because I feel like we should all take advantage of this opportunity. High yield savings, accounts, CDs, T-bills, these are all great options to capture five plus percent on your cash right now. And the good news is many people have actually beefed up their savings during this time. But shockingly, only 20% of people have a high yield savings account, even though the interest on these accounts is in some cases 1600 times higher than traditional savings accounts. Most people opt to use a traditional savings account simply because it's convenient. It's more convenient than making the switch. But if you're still using one of the big banks, chances are you're earning next to nothing on your savings. So this is your call to action to actually make sure that you put your savings in a place where it's going to earn a decent rate of return. And while I absolutely believe we should be taking advantage of these higher rates on our savings, it does bring up the question, can you save too much money? And honestly and unequivocally, I think the answer to that is a resounding yes. According to Personal Capital, the average person in their 20s is keeping 28% of their wealth in cash. And it's not just young adults building up their cash reserves. It's a noticeable trend across the board with high net worth individuals as well. In fact, as of 2022, high net worth individuals stored 34% of their wealth in cash and cash equivalents, up 10% from 2021. And consider that a high net worth individual is someone who's classified as having at least a million dollars in liquid investable assets. So 34% of that portfolio represents a very sizable cash balance. We've never seen this before. Sitting on tons of cash, sitting idle, waiting for the right opportunity, the amount of money held in cash has never been so high. And the jump year over year has never been so high. They're putting their money into short-term cash allocation, checking accounts, savings accounts, and CDs. And a lot of this behavior, this beefing up of cash reserves, has to do with the recent past, the volatility in the market, as well as those guaranteed higher rates of return on cash accounts. And investments in equities, think stocks, ETFs, index funds, has been markedly lower this year. In fact, equity investments are 17% lower than usual, and ETFs are 15% lower than usual. It just goes to show that a lot of investors are deviating from the strategy of always be buying to holding off a little bit and sitting on the sidelines. Typically, financial professionals will recommend that anywhere from 5 to 20% of your portfolio be held in cash. But that's a pretty vast range and it depends on your life circumstance. A lot of times you'll hear when it comes to your emergency fund, it should be three to six months worth of expenses. But that changes if say you're a freelancer with an unpredictable work schedule or say you're a retiree. Maybe at that point your cash reserves are closer to a year's worth of expenses. So that can help to explain this very broad range. And the good news is that while a record number of people across all age groups report that they are in fact setting aside money every single month. The vast majority of this money is being kept in cash, as most don't even have an investment or a retirement account established to put this money in. But regardless of who you are, what phase of life you're in, you don't wanna to be too heavily designated in cash because there really are consequences to keeping too much cash on hand. First and foremost, there's always an opportunity cost. With every choice we make, when we decide to do one thing, we're effectively deciding not to do another. 
For instance, when you decide to save rather than spend, perhaps that's a good choice. You're being diligent with your dollars. But likewise, when you decide to save, you're also deciding not to invest. The great news is that these high yield savings, T-bills and CDs are all paying very favorable interest rates right now, north of 5%, which as I said, you should absolutely be taking advantage of these accounts for your short term cash reserves. These are the highest rates we've seen in decades. So don't miss that opportunity. But these accounts are not a substitute for investing. And we have to keep in mind that while 5% is currently beating inflation, it was lagging behind inflation earlier this year and into last year. And no doubt over time, these rates will adjust downward to be more or less in line with inflation. And also keep in mind that the S&P itself is up almost 20% this year. So if you are sitting in an account making 5% with money you otherwise would have been investing, you effectively lost out on a 15% return. Long term, investing beats keeping your money in cash. History has shown that over and over and over again. Over time, money loses its value due to inflation. Historically, inflation has hovered around two or 3%, but we all became intimately familiar with it this past year and a half when it hit higher levels and forced us to all run our budgets just a little bit tighter. And while these cash accounts are currently paying higher rates than inflation, it's unlikely that that'll stick around for the long term or that the real rates of return on these accounts, real return being the nominal rate of return or the state rate of return minus inflation would be sufficient enough to grow your wealth over time. Most of us rely on the power of compounding interest to build our wealth so we can one day achieve financial freedom. That's not likely to happen sitting in cash accounts. Consider the real rate of return on a high yield savings account compared to the real rate of return with the S&P 500 over a 30 year period. Rates of return absolutely matter. If the recent behavior of the stock market and economic factors like inflation cause you to change your investing strategy, it could be a sign that your emotions are getting the best of you. There's nothing wrong with beefing up your cash balance if you have a specific goal in mind. Maybe you're saving up for a bigger purchase, think a car or a home. These could absolutely temporarily boost your cash balances. Or maybe you were concerned about a recession and you wanted to have cash on hand to weather that economic storm. Play a little defense with your offense. Again, totally fine. However, if the whole market situation made your tummy a little squeamish and caused you to change your investing strategy, that might be a sign that you were invested too aggressively for your risk tolerance. Especially when you're younger and retirement is 20, 30, 40 years away, what the market is doing today should not impact your investing strategy. In fact, when the market goes down, your perspective should be, great, things are on sale, what a great time to buy. As you get closer to retirement, you wanna make sure that you have adequate cash on hand, adequate short-term cash reserves, so if there is a market downturn, you don't necessarily have to withdraw from your portfolio in the midst of that. But regardless of your age bracket, you should have a solid investing strategy that works for you, that doesn't cause you to react or change your behavior no matter what the market is doing. And there's a chance that keeping too much cash on hand can actually increase your tax burden. If you're funneling more money into your cash accounts rather than taking advantage of your retirement accounts, that can increase your tax burden. If you reduce your contributions to those traditional retirement accounts, that's gonna increase your income and that'll increase your tax burden. Even if you more regularly make use of the Roth variety of these accounts, yes, that money goes in post-tax, but once that money's invested, it gets to grow completely tax-free. Odds are, if you're simply sitting in cash, say in a high yield savings account or CDs and making 5%, you're probably being taxed on that. Unless, of course, this money is sitting in a tax-advantaged account. Saving money is a great habit but not at the expense of investing. A better practice is to always be buying, no matter what is happening in the market, no matter what's happening in the economy. That's the only way to grow your wealth over time. Have you guys made changes to your cash balances in the past year or two? Let me know in the comments down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.